This video I'm going to talk about analyzing data, specifically I'm going to talk about mean, median, and mode. So when I have, uh, this is considered to be, by the way, one variable statistics, or I only have, there's not, it's not a sort of graphing relationship where you have an x, y, you just have single numbers that you're working with. So uh, the most common way, these are called measures of central tendency. I'll throw that in the corner over here. Central tendency, because you're saying something about where the middle of the number is, or what happens a lot, or that sort of thing. So all that's in play here. I'm getting lazy on my handwriting lately, so I'm trying to fix it. Uh, so anyway, uh, mean, median, and mode. Those are the, the big ones that you usually deal with. There's also range, by the way. Range in the case of one variable statistic would just be uh, how far, how spread out the data is, the biggest minus the smallest, that sort of stuff. And when that, with that said, it's probably a good idea that we organize the numbers numerically first. If we put them in uh, numeric order, it makes a lot more sense. My suggestion is if you do it uh, by hand, once you write a number down, mark it out. So I look and I see that three is the smallest number. And then there's another three, so I'm going to put three again. And then there's a four. So that's out. Another four. And another four. Then I need to put six, seven. And this is one of those areas where not getting sloppy is in your best interest. Because if you scribble it on paper and you lose stuff, that's when you start to get these wrong. So there's my numbers in like a nice numeric fashion. So when I'm dealing with mean, it's the only one that doesn't have like a little code word that tends to go with it. Median, you tend to code word uh, middle. Mode, you might say most. Mean, uh, average really. Some people have gone really far and said, like, you know, your mean teacher averages your low test grades together, that sort of thing. I don't, don't really get in on that party, but it is what it is. Anyway, um, so really what you're dealing with is the sum of the values. So add them all up. And then you want to just divide by how many there are, so the number of values. So you might say something like sum over how many. That tends to be the, the short version of that. So if I did uh, 3 plus 3 plus 4 plus 4 plus 4 plus 6 plus 7 plus 8 plus 10 plus 11 and my suggestion is if you're typing it in this way in a calculator you just make sure that you have everything the way that you want it so go back through and look at them and it's supposed to be a 10 um, go back through and look at them and make sure everyone's there you should probably count the numbers I know there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 of them, which is helpful for the denominator anyway, because the number of values is 10. That works. Uh, so I could just go like into my calculator and make sure I have 10 numbers there and they're the right ones. So I end up with a uh, total value on, in the numerator of, so I'm going to have to make a little space for myself. Mess that one up. Uh, didn't give myself enough room. So anyway, I end up with a numerator value of 60. Over 10, so my mean value is 6 right there. That's how that setup sort of sort of works. Now the median number would be the middle. Oops, I meant to do that in blue. There we go. So the median number would just be the middle. So what I need to do is uh, put them out, uh, all the numbers. So write them here. You don't have to rewrite them. You can just use the original version if you don't have to be able to see them very well. And then I tend to start at the left side and mark it out with like a slash down into the left. And then I'll go the other direction 
for the second one, just so I know that I where I am if I kind of lose my place. And then I'll go back to the original direction, then in. In this case, I have two middle numbers. So what I need to do, uh, if you just have one, that's your median. If you break it down into an odd number, so say there's nine, well, there'll be one in the middle, and that's your median value. In this case, I have two of them, so I just need to find the middle number. I mean, it's five, but you know you can add them up and divide by two, and you get a median value of five. That's how that works. And the mode is just the one that happens the most. So you sort of, uh, if I were to do a little mini frequency chart, and you definitely don't have to do a frequency chart with this, I'm just doing it for my own uh, benefit. Uh, so for three, there's two of them. For four, there's three of them. For six, there's one. All the rest just have one. So the one that happens the most is four. So my mode. is 4. If I had another 3 in there, or one less 4, you can have multiple modes, or it could be what's called bimodal. Or you can have no mode at all. If all the numbers are different, you just say no mode. If it has two modes, you just say, you know, you just name which modes they are. So 4 and 3, that sort of thing. That's the... Uh, gist of how it all goes. In terms of the difference between the mean and the median, you'll see that the mean value is actually greater than the median value in this case. Well, if we look at the numbers, that sort of makes sense because you, uh, you lose a lot of capital in the median setup because the first five numbers are just the same two numbers and they're very close together. Uh, they won't be, st but the 11 and the 10, which are much bigger in the second set, will stretch that mean value out a little bit. So sometimes you have to tell which one is the better, uh, and now which one better analyzes the data. Median will always tell you the middle, but it doesn't necessarily. Like if I was going to get an idea of what kind of test scores my students made uh, on a test or whatever, I would probably use the mean a as my, my setup more than likely because if I just use the median, I could have a ton at one end and it may give me a, a little bit of a skewed... Uh, I, I sort of would like to look at the information from the mean maybe or you know maybe I wanted to... I had a, one kid made a really good grade. Basically, I would want to, it to be the median, or sorry, be the mean, because if I have a couple kids who make really good grades versus the other ones, it doesn't make the other ones look so bad. So I want to feel good about how things have gone for that test. On the other hand, if I was going to do a reasonable analysis, my original explanation was a little bit weird, I realize now. Uh, if I want to do an actual analysis, median's probably the way I need to go, uh, just because it'll it'll analyze the spread a little bit better. If I have a bunch of really low scores and just a couple high ones that would bring it up, the median would tell me that, yeah, things didn't go too well on this test. Uh, the mode would have no benefit to me uh, for the most part, unless I had a whole bunch of hundreds or something. But uh, the mode probably wouldn't tell me much in terms of uh, the data. There's other situations where the mode is a reasonably useful uh, setup, but in that case the mode would not be that helpful to me. But anyway, uh, look at the data in terms of how it's sort of skewed around and you get a good idea of which one mean, median, or mode is the best for you to analyze central tendency.